Hi, I'm Joanne Vicknair, Meemaw, with It's Storytime, Meemaw, an answered prayer for stories that point children to God on the Truth Network for Kids. Your chosen Truth Network podcast is starting in just a few seconds. Enjoy it. Share it. But most of all, thank you for listening to the Truth Podcast Network. This is the Truth Network. To and to and four, four and four are eight, eight and eight are six. Welcome to the Christian Car Guy Radio Show. I say this calls for action, and now. Counting on wisdom today on the Christian Car Guy Show. Yes, today, show with Bob, my good friend from 109 U Pull It. We're counting on wisdom. And so you might ask, Robbie, what wisdom can I count on? Ah, ha. Kind of strange, me being here on, uh, on uh, Wisdom Day. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm glad you asked about what wisdom you can count on. You might have heard Sesame Street there with Inchworm, pretty famous song. Most of us heard when we were raising our kids or when we were younger, depending on which group you're in. <laughs> and then Let Me Count the Ways by Natural and then Twyla Paris with How Beautiful is the Body of Christ. So today's show, as always, is brought to you by Hebrew Letter. I know you're not shocked, Bob. And so I want you to think about the, the Hebrew letter tet for a second. It looks kind of like a little pregnant letter. It's kind of got a big bulge because it's just pregnant with potential. It is. And the idea of goodness, right, when God made you, right, he said, man, when he, when he made Bob, he said, now that's very good. <laughs> and the reason he Opinions said that's very good. He did. He did. Because... <laughs> Pregnant with potential is exactly what you are when you're born if and if you can begin to fall in love with Christ and reflect him, then all of a sudden, man, there's some beauty that's unbelievable. So in Psalms 119, there's this wonderful, wonderful wisdom here. It says, by thy commandments, I'm made wise by my enemies. They are ever with me. So I'm made wise by my enemies is an interesting thing to think about. So I don't know if you've ever thought about it, but if you study the way that your enemy attacks you, you can figure out what he's afraid of and also where you may be dangerous, right? And so what has he attacked you your entire life? Let's think about this. Well, as you think about that, let me just point out, you know I mentioned counting, so this is going to have something to do with it. Did you know that there are 173 words of validation or affection in the Song of Solomon and 117 verses. In other words, there's just 117 verses in the Song of Solomon, but Jesus gives validation to his bride. In other words, tells her how beautiful. He's counting the ways that he loves you, by the way. He's counting all the things that he loves about you 173 times in 117 verses. Why do you think? Because he knows that since you were born, your enemy has been attacking. You're a loser. You're ugly. You're stupid. You're fat. You're lazy. Whatever it is that he has for you, he's been saying it and saying it and saying it and saying it. But the truth is something far different from that. And so Jesus has given us 173. It's worth looking at, too, by the way. It's definitely worth getting into your soul, because this is some of the richest poetry in the history of the world, is written to you 173 times. He tells you, you're beautiful. Behold, thou art fair, my love. Behold, thou art fair, thou hast dove eyes. I mean, it goes on and on and on and on and on. All right? So 
Why is it so important that we believe him? Why, why do you think Satan is so afraid? Why is it so important that we believe that we're that beautiful? Let me explain it to you. So you don't hide under the bushel. When you think you're all those other labels that you get, you hide. And you're not willing to stand up on the, on the soapbox and talk about Jesus. You're not talk about, you know, how you, you see him and the way that you reflect him and all those kind of things. So let me share a story that's going to illustrate this. And I'm hoping, as you might guess, that you would tell your story, right? So my little brother, we, you might know, I didn't hear last week because my little, we had a boot camp. And I was so encouraged because my little brother, who's not so little anymore, he's 65. <laughs> he was coming. And even more fun, he was bringing his grandson, who was 16, who was going to drive part of the way. And so as he get in the car to leave from Nashville last Thursday, my grandnephew tells my brother, man, I hope we see, we're going to North Carolina. I hope we see a black bear. And my little brother just, you know, talking like, a Dillmore Wood. We've been car salesmen all our lives. He said, oh, yeah, we're going to see a bear. Hundred <laughs> <laughs> percent. Uh, oh, yeah, we're going to see it. You know, yeah, we're going to, you know, is it, you're not going to see one in Tennessee, but you're going to see one in North Carolina. Oh, that's interesting. So anyway, they get here. And my brother had attended a boot camp about four years ago, and I knew that he, he'd sort of seen God in a new way, and God was getting his attention, and he he met some of the characters that come to boot camp, like Corn. Or if, if for those of you familiar with Corn, <laughs> he's been on my show a couple of times, <laughs> and Sam and other people. And he, he shared a, a cabin with um, some of the guys that go to my church, some of the younger guys, and all these things happened to him. But the last day of the boot camp, all right, I, I was to give a talk on the stages of the masculine journey. And when I got up that morning, just to show you how things get attacked. We had Sam and I, the, you know, the other gentleman with the masculine journey, we tend to do the last talk of the, of, the, of the weekend. And we had worked on this thing for hours and hours and hours and hours. When I got up first thing Sunday morning, the talk was totally gone. <laughs> it was not on the computer. All the, all the movie clips and all the stuff that we were going to use in this talk was, was all gone. Just, and so what does that tell you, Bob? Attack. All right, attack. Something's important. Something's real important, right? And so interestingly, you know, as always, I've just prayed, you know, God, what do you want me to share? And we were talking about a lot of different things. You know, when we were talking about the going from the uh, cowboy ranger stage to the warrior stage, his grandson's ears perked up. And so, you know, they were perked up to see what are these stages of the masculine journey, which start out as a boy, and then, you know, you, you make your way to king, and then after king comes sage. And Robbie, um, Mark never thought that, wow, I might be a sage at 65, right? Because you, you're going into a different stage of your life. And, and I was saying that sages point people to God. That's what a sage does, right? <laughs> in fact, I had a picture of um, Jesus just pointing in the sky. I said, that's the point, man. He's pointing you to the Father, Okay. It's the point. If you get the point, are you getting the point, Christian? Okay. <laughs> so, and I said, and so here's some sage advice, right? And here was the sage advice. It came out of the movie Rudy. And if you saw the movie Rudy, he was trying to get an older dame to play football, and he wasn't getting any answers, and so he starts praying. He goes into this Catholic church, as he would for Notre Dame, and, he, and this priest meets him there, and he goes, oh, you're, you're applying to a higher power. And he goes, yeah, I just, you know, only got a few weeks left. If I don't get it, I'm not going to make it. And he said, well, you know, and he goes, you got to help me. You got to help me. You got to help me. He's talking to the priest. And he said, well, you know, in 35 years of theological study, I've come across two undeniable facts. Number one, there is a God. And number two, I'm not him. <laughs> now, there's some sage advice, okay? It just is. Unbelievably sage advice. I said, if you'll grasp hold of that, there is a God and I'm not him. It's going to give you a phenomenal amount of bandwidth. Every young man needs to know this because you have no money idea how many hours I have spent in my life trying to be God, right? I mean, hours and hours and hours trying to solve problems I couldn't solve, trying to figure out things I couldn't figure out, trying to do all sorts of things. Think about how much bandwidth you would have in any given week if just 
just took away the part of the day that you spent being God. <laughs> And there was my sage advice, right? And so we gave the talk. Everybody prayed. My brother hugged. We said, ah, oh, life's good. Well, about two hours after they left, I get a text from my brother. Man, I'm really going some, th- I just can't get this, this word out of my mind, Robbie. There is a God and I'm not him. <laughs> and I, I'm telling you, I got, I got, and pray for me. So, you know, I'm praying for him. And about two hours after that, I get another text. From, I got a story. You're just not going to believe it. You're not going to believe it. Well, talk about under attack. I could not get up with my brother until Monday night because of telephone problems and all other stuff. And finally, he tells me this story. He said, you know, I couldn't get that out of my mind. There is a God and I'm not him. There is a God and I'm not him. And he said, all of a sudden it hit me how he'd been coming after me after the last boot camp. And I just started weeping and crying, and I couldn't stop crying, and I started going the wrong way on the road, and I had to pull over. I was just crying on the side of the road. So wait till you hear the end of this. Your story's going to blow your mind, Bob. It is. And everybody else. Because why? Because we didn't hide. We didn't hide, and we reflect God. So when we come back, we want your story where you dazzled the universe. We'll be right back. You're listening to The Truth Network and truthnetwork.com. Counting on wisdom today on the Christian Car Guy Show. How fun is that? And when we left our hero, (laughs) my brother, well, the idea is we're made wise by our enemies. And so what is he attacking? What's he coming after? Be a pretty good idea that you're on the right track somewhere. Um, If you start to see a lot of attacks coming into your life, there must be some way that, that he's trying to get you to hide and to crawl under a bushel somehow so that doesn't show up. So when we left my brother, he was on the side of the road. And and as we talked about, um, that he had heard this from the stage, that there is a God and I'm not him. I I don't know if that can ever really sink in enough, Bob. (laughs) It marinates well. It does. There is a God and I'm not him. And so he he said, man, I I just, I, I couldn't function. I couldn't think. I pulled over the side of the road. Now, the thing is, the 16-year-old's grandson's in the car with him watching his grandfather. You know, this is, and my brother's not that emotional. I mean, this is a an incident, right? So he says, man, you're going to have to drive. You're going to have to drive. So they switch drivers. And Devin goes over and gets on the other side. Mark gets back in the, in the pasture side. When they shut the doors, a black bear walks right in front of him. <laughs> <laughs> here's your sign <laughs> uh, yeah. you know is that not god i mean you know he always puts his exclamation so that just in case you might think this isn't real just in case you might think there isn't a god <laughs> and i'm not him just just to put his exclamation point on it right in so many god stories right that I, I you know you hear him and you hear him but there's always some way that, you know, that, that, that he puts down a marker so that you go, yeah, that was, that was the deal. That was the moment. I've had, <clears throat> I've had quite a few uh, issues and things recently that just sh- where he has absolutely showed up. And, uh, and it seems like it happens when, when I do, when I follow instruction, when I follow the wisdom and, and, uh, I've got back into going to the Wednesday night service and so many things have happened right away that were so positive. But the one I'd like to share is I went this Wednesday night and I got some sage advice this Wednesday (laughs) night. And, uh, I see you found out there was a God and you were in him. (laughs) Absolutely. And, uh, I followed the wisdom of a sage and, um, although she's not much older than me, but Miss Betty Hughes spoke Wednesday night and she was was just so good. She was talking about being grateful and, you know, the sad people 
and the complaining and I was like, ooh, I've been doing a lot of complaining lately. So I have a method when I need to purge something from my life. I put a rubber band on my arm. Uh, when they asked me about working with the youth at church, my language was pretty foul, and I knew that had to change, so I put a rubber band on my arm, and if I used bad language, I would pop myself with the rubber band. And this time, I'm using the rubber band to help me uh, with some complaining and some negativity. And uh, when I find myself complaining, I pop myself with the rubber band, in the past, to get rid of the bad words, I had a pretty big blister on my arm, <laughs> but my language did improve, and I had a very good run with the youth group at church, and uh, and uh, I'm having some some success with getting rid of the negativity and the complaining, and and trying to maintain an attitude of gratitude, and and things are but, brighter uh, and more sunshiny in my life right now. Right, and I, but I, I really think your story of the youth is is a perfect example of what of what we're talking about. By wisdom, you know, we're made wise by our enemies. That, you know, they wanted you to teach Sunday school, but what did you think? I thought they were crazy for thinking that Bob Young should be teaching Sunday school or working with the youth group or having any contact with young people. Um, I've said it before, and, and uh, but, you know, I was just absolutely sure that they had lost their minds and that they would rethink it really soon, and they wouldn't approach me to do that if they got their heads clear or anything. <laughs> but uh, then it was just like instantly God just thumped me on the head and said, Bob, what you think disqualifies you uniquely qualifies you to work with the young people. And uh, I said that. I think Robbie was the first person I ever said that to. But it just, it was just so true. And after I thought about it for a little bit, well, yeah, who better to talk to young people about the pitfalls of life and the the hazards out there that somebody that fell in every one of those pits, <laughs> you know, and crawled out and jumped back in a few times, you know. I I had a – he found a way of using my negative experiences for a positive impact on young people's lives. And uh, we, we're pretty sure we helped some, but, you know, if only one uh, – got an impact from it, it was worth the embarrassment of, of sharing the pitfalls, you know. It was not easy to stand up in front of young people and say, you know, hey, I did this, and hey, I did that, and here's what happened when I did this. But the but the beauty of it, from my standpoint, because I know you, it's like corn, you know. There's there's people out there that live from their a whole heart, right? And... and and you don't get half a Bob Young. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and a little Bob Young goes a long way some days too. Yeah, you don't you don't get just a little bit of you know you get the whole enchilada right. And, and if you know corn, I mean you don't get a little corn. You you get you know the whole package when when he you know when he shows up and 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 the, and when you when you completely are wholehearted right. That's what that's why King David was. You know, a man after God's own heart. And so when did you have a chance to dazzle the universe? Or maybe you got a chance to see somebody dazzle the universe. Whatever that looked like, I would love to know the story and then how God put his punctuation mark on it. 866-348-7884 is the number to call in and share. 866-348-7884. Oh, man, I'm excited to hear it. You're listening to The Truth Network and truthnetwork.com. Two and two are four. on with 
wisdom today on the Christian Car Guy show is we're talking about we're made wise by our enemies. And if you look at all the ways that he puts people down, you can see the value of building people up. That's why Jesus 173 times in the Song of Solomon, he gives us words of validation of how beautifully things we are and and those kind of things. There's tremendous wisdom right there. If you think about it and you may go, Robbie, what does this have to do with cars? Well, let me tell you, okay, it's it's Thanksgiving weekend. And a few of you might be driving, just saying, right? <laughs> and I don't know if you thought about this, but I, I was just thinking about it. That if if we spend as much time admiring other drivers as we do as getting frustrated at them, right? Like what if I what if I went, wow, man, that was a really this guy's going the speed limit. Or wow, this guy was really, you know, he looked out for me. This guy, you know, he another turned on his turn signal and let me know who was I like that. <laughs> yeah, I like that. I think I've actually give people a little credit. Right, 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 right. And because here's the thing. That man, nobody gets to hear how well they did stuff. They only get to hear how bad they did stuff. Mm. Right? Oh, uh, they say the the good you die goes in the grave with you. All right. And the so bad can, lives can you, on forever. <laughs> can you imagine? Now, I'm not saying I do this, but I'm going to work on it, okay? I'm, I'm going to get me a rubber band. Can you imagine if your kids in the car heard you say, man, that was a really courteous driver. That was really nice. You know, just I'm, I'm, if we just focus on the good, right? Because I've told Positive. this story about my Sunday school class, and I've never forgotten it. It made such an impact that, you know, one time I just did this lesson. It was called the Mutual Admiration Society, and I just simply put a note on everybody's back. A, a, they hung a white paper, and I had everybody in the class go around and write on that paper how that person reflected Christ. They couldn't see it because it was on their back. And believe it or not, for the entire Sunday, and these were high school juniors and seniors, and, and for the entire hour, they wrote and wrote and wrote books about each other and how wonderful they were. They really did. Well, several years later, we had a reunion of that. And somebody asked, well, of all the Sunday school lessons that you heard, which one was your favorite? And one of them said, well, you know, that one where Robbie put that note on our backs and we told each other how much we thought of each other? She said, I still have my note. And then another one says, well, I, I still have my note. It's in my dresser. Well, I still have my note. They all, Bob, they all still had their notes. They still had that sign. And the reason is we hear so few words of validation. We hear so few words of how beautiful we are. We, so, we hear so few words of this. So can we take a lesson from Jesus? If he took 173 times and 117 verses to tell Bob how beautiful you are, what what kind of impact would it be if we could count the ways of all the people that we love, right? Well, I'm so glad we're reinforcing this today because the seed got planted Wednesday night and, and it had been doing okay, but I'm just being here today and hearing this reinforcement of it as a uh, it's watering my seed, and I feel like, you know, I think it may take hold better and have more of a positive impact in my life as we build on it. And I'm not like a 180-degree turn or anything, but I am doing a little better about being positive, and, and I'm just... It excites me today that God think, uh, knew that I needed a little water on that seed and uh, that you're watering my seeds today. Oh, mine too. I, you know, we never do this, Bob, that I don't get as much out of it. <laughs> so we have Clay is in uh, Durham, North Carolina. And Clay, you're on the Christian Car Guy Show. Good morning. Well, let me see. Should I start this off in a positive way? No, Please. I can't go the negative way. So <laughs> I, was, I'm, I was going to say happy Thanksgiving to you guys, but I'm going to turn it around. And because I heard some positive stuff over the weekend last weekend and some positive stuff during the week, and especially I went to a Thanksgiving Day service um, Thursday. And I'm, I'm going to give thanks to you guys. Um, you know, I give thanks for Truth Radio. Um, you know, it's interesting that you uh, are, in a way, bringing up the word wisdom. And I wouldn't say that what it's nothing that dazzles me, as I'm, I give thanks for 
the situation because um, you never know when you, you might be going through something. Somebody's going to share something. A, a pastor is going to share a message. And I, I'm thankful for that. I get thanked for it because, I mean, um, you know, uh, I don't know if y'all know about the movie that's coming out in February that um, y'all's wonderful brother in the Lord uh, hosted a movie a couple weeks ago and got to go see it. It's the Jesus Revolution. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I give thanks to that because, um, you know, what you were saying what, what, about what your brother shared, I remember many years ago that um, I was do, going uh, through something, and I thought it was about me, but uh, one of the churches I used to go to had this thing called Life University, and it, one, of those classes, one of those classes in Life University was the Purpose Driven Life. I took that class three times so I could get a better understanding because in the first few words of that first chapter of that book, it says it's not about you. And for years and years and years, I thought it was. So, you know, when I, I've, I've gone over that, and I've gone over that, and I'm thankful to the Lord for it because of what He's been able to establish for me to be able to hear and learn stuff. And it, it's very heartfelt and it's very meaningful because when you can, you know, the, the book of James talks about it, when you lack wisdom, and there are so many people that lack it, but all you have to do right. is ask. I love, I love that. And that you, you, you're right, Clay. I mean, it's simple. That's a Rick Warren book, isn't it? It's not about oh, you. Yes, sir, it is. <laughs> yeah, uh, that 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 Sunday school's. Oh Lord, that was my Sunday school lesson for uh, many, many, many times, and uh, it was a super impactful on my life. And thank you for bringing that back up because I hadn't thought. I'm getting water on my seeds today. Yeah, that's wonderful stuff. Thank you, Clay. You well, that's, brother, that's a lot of wisdom brother. in a short period of time. Well, Brother Bob, I just, uh, you know, I remember when I first took it, 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 it took, it, like I shared it, it was three times because I needed, I, I didn't know the Lord then. I needed to get a better understanding because, you know, when you're out there doing what you need to do and all this other stuff, you think it is about you. You think it is, uh, you know, whatever. Um, you know, and something else that was shared before I decided, I said, you know what, uh, the Lord just in a way leading me to call. I think about the word all, that there is no sum, there is no most, it's all. And, I mean, all you can do is just give thanks for that. Just there be thankful, go. because it means a lot to a person. It means a lot to individuals. And somebody right. came up, actually two different people came up to me and said, I give thanks for what you share in the class that we have. And I'm like, you can't... <laughs> I tell people, I said, don't thank me, thank the Lord, because it's what I hear. It's what's in my heart, not not the head, but the heart. Right. And I'm so able to share. Then you, I'm don't, able. you don't want to hide. I understand. And when you have, Clay, I got. Right. And, uh, okay. All right. So I just want to say I've, there's several other people want to get on. I want to get them on. So thank you, Clay. Okay. As always, well, I God appreciate you. God bless you coming. both, and thank you all. And again, I give thanks for Truth Radio, and people turn it on because it's worth it. Thank you, buddy. Thank you, Clay. God bless. You're shining. All right, we got Ann is in Huntersville, North Carolina. So, Ann Alt, my friend, how are you? Yes, indeedy. Hi. I've loved hearing your stories, and I didn't want to call in, but I really felt the Lord told me to. Well, good. So, uh, making, making those choices in life is hard, and he reminded me of that the other night. Um, I, uh, you know, I was watching The King and I. King and I on TV, and I had not seen that movie in a long time. It's a wonderful movie about Anna and the King of Siam, and she was nanny to the king. By the way, I've loved your stories and, and your reluctant obedience, Bob, and, and that's what I'm doing right now, and, and it, it, it really pays to obey the living God, doesn't it, you know, <laughs> in the long run, but it's painful. And, uh, the you know, the Lord had me watch that movie, and he reminded me about, the you know, the King and I, and uh, when I auditioned for that in college at a community theater, I was auditioning for Anna, and I didn't know anybody. I, My older brother, who ended up being uh, in the Marines and FBI, um, I was going to leave. I said, I'm going to leave, and he said, sit down and shut up. <laughs> so I did, and I was afraid. I just wanted to know I don't want to face this pain. 
And uh, that was, you know, I sat down, I mean, I got up there. And I hate to jump in, but we're going to leave our hero where she didn't, she was reluctant to share her (laughs) glory, right? So she was fixing to dazzle. I'm just telling you, I, I love that movie too. I wish I'd known it was on. The King and I. And it is really the whole story, isn't it? The King and I. Well, we're going to come back with The King and I. (laughs) When we come back, stay tuned. 866-34-TRUTH. We need your story. You're listening to The Truth Network and truthnetwork.com. To them, to Wisdom today on the Christian Car Guy Show. And speaking of wisdom, when we left our hero, Anne, she was <laughs> trying to hide from being the lead in The King and I when you really are the lead in The King and I, which, by the way, so is everyone listening. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Exactly. So that's the what, point. I didn't want to. I didn't want to. Yeah, I just wanted to. I was so nervous. I wanted to leave the audition for Anna and The King and I. And my older brother told me to sit down and shut up. I auditioned. I got the part of Anna and the King and I, which has led to a whole show business career. And finding the king of my life for me and my brother, both of us ultimately gave our lives to Jesus Christ and all from reluctantly saying yes to the king. It pays to obey, no matter how reluctant your obedience, it pays to obey. (laughs) That's wisdom. That's the wisdom yeah. Bob's experiencing, too. I'm just, uh, just like you say, I went the other night. I listened to the instruction to go to church. I got something I needed, and and it's growing. And just a yeah. little bit of positivity. I mean, what would it be like if the, the news was positive every night? <laughs> you know? I, I don't remember getting much positive at all off, off the newscast oh. or anything, but... It's just uh, it's it's just really surprising. Well, to we need me. to give them a rubber band, yeah. you know, so they'd be slapping. Them <laughs> <Yeah. around. laughs> and, it just and I'm so me. glad I said yes to Christian Car Guy Theater too. Back yes. in 2015, we this, we started with two of us, and now it's cast of thousands. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot. Well, thank you, and happy Thanksgiving weekend. Happy so Thanksgiving to you guys. I'm loving the show. Love you both. Love bye you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. I am excited. We got Angie is in Salt Lake City. Angie, you got a story for us? I do. It's great to meet you folks. Oh, we're excited. I really am to hear what you have. Well, I spent most of my life in a very works-based shame and and guilt-ridden religion. And um, I was almost exactly 40. I remember it was the same week as my birthday when I realized that I couldn't keep going back there. Not a lot of positivity there. (laughs) No, not at all. Um, So I knew I needed God and figured for at least a season of my life, I might try a different church because I knew my church was giving me so much anxiety. I was getting migraines just thinking about going to my church. Mm. Like debilitating migraines that I even thought was going to take me to the ER a couple of times. Wow. Everything in my life was just crushing in on me at that point in my life. And um, I decided, okay, I'm going to go explore other churches, if nothing else, just to show my son that, that I, as long as he is, is following God, I'm, I'm content. And also I wanted to, you know, have some time to grow in God, even if it was away from what I still believed was a true church. And uh, first church I walk into, little church in a uh, meeting in a, a community center, and I felt the love of God so quickly. I felt presence of God, and I found out later my church had been praying for a whole year for a female vocalist, and that was the same year that my life was coming to a head. And I walk in there, and within months, I'm offering to be in their band to add some some harmony because it's such a small little band. They only had one singer. No, two. Sorry, two singers, but they hardly had any harmony at all. And now I'm 
one of their lead singers in their band that's slowly growing. The church is growing, and God has just put such a huge relief in my life now that I've truly understood grace. I, I took the time to do a word study of all the scriptures about grace. Oh, wow. And it, it has so changed my outlook. Yeah, and he, you're his favorite. What Angel. Christ did for me. <laughs> you're his absolute favorite. And he's got all those words for you, right? And I bet you've got, I would love to hear that harmony. And, and no doubt you're dazzling the universe as, as people are listening to you worship, because when you're worshiping from that heart, right? It's a completely different experience. Absolutely. I'm learning to worship in ways that, like, I used to wonder what worship really meant because it didn't make sense in the context of the church I was in. And now I'm really learning what it means. And God's even pouring lyrics into me that my oh, my wow. band leaders helping me turn into music that we're going to have original in our own church. Oh, wow. Well, you, when you get that done, you need to call us back and let us hear it. We would Absolutely. love to. We would. Angie, thank you so much. Your Your story made my day. God bless you. I, I'm really so grateful that you had that opportunity. I just hope it blesses somebody else, which is probably the number one reason I called in today is to give him the glory and to give hope to others that are struggling. Exactly right. Whatever church you're in, if you're not feeling God's presence, if you don't feel loved, if you feel shame, he ain't there. <laughs> I can Absolutely. Tell you, that's wonderful. Thank you, Angie. God bless. I appreciate it so much. Well, we got Keith is in High Point. Keith, you're on the Christian Car Guys show. Good morning. Good morning to you. Love that uh, voice. I love that voice. What you got for us? Well, it was years ago at my restaurant when I had my restaurant going. The uh, things were just going terrible, 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 terrible. Just something all the time. And I, you know, heard also if you know you, you pray and ask God for wisdom, He'll give it to you. So I prayed, and after a while, things got worse. <laughs> they, were get, they were getting real bad. And then some. I heard somebody say, well, you know, you achieve wisdom through trials and, and suffering or trials. So it wasn't just a few minutes or later on, I went and I prayed. I was at, at the restaurant, and I went in the office and prayed. And I said, Lord, I don't want any more wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> This wisdom's about said, to kill me, huh? <laughs> I said, yeah. I said, if you would, you can handle it. And I would, as I was saying that, I don't want any more wisdom. I thought, well, he's making me wise already. <laughs> and uh, just, you know, anything that came up after that, I was, you know, I said, well, let the Lord handle it. You know, I, I you know, I, I'm not qualified right now. And the, um, but yeah, it's true though. If you ask him for wisdom. He will give it to you. That's that's no doubt about that. And he gives it in different ways, no. like he does a, does many things. Oh he, man, I mean, does. that's wisdom to figure out we're not God, right? Like he's got to handle. There's certain yes. things we cannot handle. And you know, that's well said, Keith. It really is because there's a lot of lessons I learned that way. <laughs> I, I, I still, when I think about, it, I still kind of laugh inside because you know. You know, Lord, please give me wisdom. You know, a month later, I'm saying, Lord, please don't give me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you just handle it, please. I love it. I love it. I've been so there. I reckon that's the wisdom is. You know, <laughs> yeah. Let go, let God. That's exactly <laughs> right. Uh, he, there is a God, and I'm not him. And Yes, amen to that. I'm, like, I'm glad out. I, I turned in today for that because uh, there is a God, and I'm not him. That's. That's really profound. <laughs> more yeah. wisdom, but it's not coming at no heartache. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Keith, thank you, my friend. It's always so great hey. to hear your voice. I appreciate you calling in today. You have a thank great you so much. weekend. Huh? And so thank you. I, well, thank I, you for your prayers. Oh, thank you. Thank you for your prayer and for everyone's prayers and for your listening today. And for my friend Bob, who's going to, uh, it's going to be a good weekend, isn't it? Uh, absolutely. Uh, I feel positive things coming in my direction, and I'm still grateful to Miss Betty for... Uh, I used to be a really positive person, and I just let a little negativity pull me in the wrong direction. So oh, there you go. Trying to well, get back on the good foot. 
Go dazzle, really. Go dazzle. Remember, slow down. Jesus walked everywhere he went, got it all done in 33 years. So go dazzle today. Get out from underneath the bushel. Show somebody what God really looks like. This is the Truth Network.